Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, it's, it's funny how you remember specific things from your childhood for seemingly no particular reason. Um, and a memory that comes to me today is the memory of a, a class science project from all the way back in the first grade. That's, yeah, it's pretty amazing. Um, my entire first grade class participated in something called uh, the lima bean experiment. Uh, for this experiment, every student in my class was given a lima bean, and we were to observe how our lima bean would grow over a few months. And even though we all had lima beans, we were all randomly assigned different scenarios in which to grow our lima beans. Some people were given lima beans in little pots with soil. However, I was given a lima bean on simply a wet paper towel. Uh, and once we got our lima beans, we were instructed where to put them. Half of the class got to put their lima beans up by the windows. However, the half of the class that I was in uh, had to put our lima beans under the sink in a cabinet. So the experiment was set, and a few weeks went by. The kids with their lima bean in the soil near the window lit up with joy as they saw their little lima beans begin to sprout. Meanwhile, I would rush to the cabinet under the sink, very anxious to check on my lima bean. But much to my disappointment, my lima bean would not grow at all. That's okay, I thought to myself. My lima bean will probably catch up to the others and it'll start growing soon. A few more weeks went by. The lima beans by the windows began blooming now and you could see even little green leaves in the pots. I ran again to check on my lima bean in its wet paper towel, but still nothing. Now more than a month had gone by. The lima beans by the windows had grown into full-blown shrubs by this time. Yet my sad little lima bean in the cabinet locked away remained a sad little lima bean. It had not grown or done anything at all while the other lima beans had completely transformed. The lesson of this experiment, of course, was that in order to grow, Seeds need three things, soil, water, and sunlight. But my lima bean had only one out of the three necessary things, only one of the necessary nutrients. It only had the water. And without sunlight and soil, my lima bean never did anything. And to this day, I have an aversion to lima beans. <laughs> <laughs> Dare I say, I even look upon lima beans with a rather scornful disposition. When I think of them, I'm reminded of the frustration and disappointment from all those years ago. Now in our gospel passage today, there is reference to another kind of plant, or at least the seed of a certain plant. Today we hear Christ expressing a little frustration with his disciples after they are unable to heal a boy possessed by a demon. They cannot drive out the demon because they lack faith. They have been given authority by Jesus to perform miracles, however, they cannot do so, and they ask Jesus why this is. It says, the disciples came to Jesus privately and said, why could we not cast the demon out? He said to them, because of your little faith, for truly I say to you, if you have faith as a grain of mustard seed, you will say to this mountain, move hence to yonder place and it will move and nothing will be impossible to you. Now, mustard seeds are even smaller than lima beans. In fact, they are just about the smallest seed of any plant on earth. Yet even though the mustard seeds are small, they are alive. Now there are people today who like to collect certain kinds of rocks. However, rocks are not alive. If you plant a rock in the ground, it will remain a rock. 
Similarly, people like to spend exorbitant amounts of money on diamonds. Though they are highly sought after and very precious, diamonds like rocks do not do anything because they are not alive. But mustard seeds, like lima beans, are alive. And when given soil, water, and sunlight, the tiny little mustard seed will produce a giant, beautiful mustard tree. So too will our faith, which has been planted in us as a small seed at the time of our baptism, sprout and grow within us if we give it a special kind of water and sunlight. Today, Christ tells us exactly the kind of special water and sunlight we need to cultivate and grow a faith so strong that it can move mountains. He says, this amazing kind of faith can be brought about only by prayer and fasting. Prayer, the active effort to connect with God, and fasting, a special practice of self-control. These two together prove to be a powerful combination that feeds the seed of our faith and causes it to grow. When we ask God to intervene in our lives through prayer, and when we take personal control over our lives by fasting and mitigating the things we eat and the things that we do, how much healthier and brighter our lives become. But do we feed our faith with prayer and fasting? Or do we lock our faith away in a wet paper towel under a sink in a cabinet, far away from any sunlight? And when our faith is locked away, how frustrated we become with life's difficulties and setbacks. How quickly we even turn on our faith. Perhaps when it doesn't grow, we become adverse to it, like I have become with lima beans. And sometimes we even simply forget about our faith and leave it behind all together. If we let our faith die, what will we do when mountains in the form of problems and challenges appear in our lives that need to be moved? Unfortunately, without an active living faith, nurtured by prayer and fasting, we are powerless when such problems or mountains appear. And then not only has our faith dried up, but our lives will seemingly dry up as well. So let's take a little better care of the seeds of faith planted deep within us. Let's take the time to water them with prayer, to allow sunlight to strengthen them with fasting and self-control. Now, in today's gospel passage, there are many people we hear about. There are all of the disciples, as well as a very large, large crowd of people that have gathered because they wanted to witness a miracle. But only one person in today's gospel passage exemplifies the kind of faith that Jesus wants to see. The one person with this true faith is the father of the boy terribly afflicted by a demon. The boy's father alone shows true faith trust and humility before the Lord when he kneels down before him and asks for his mercy from the bottom of his heart. The father lowers himself before Christ, putting himself in the lowly place of one who could receive the blessing of the most humble one of all, Jesus Christ. Let us keep this example in mind as we set out to nurture our seed of faith within us. Let us remember to begin by bringing ourselves humbly before Christ and asking him to help us move these mountains that appear and surround us. Why could we not cast it out? Jesus said to them, because of your little faith. For truly I say to you, if you have faith as a grain of mustard seed, you will say to this mountain, move hence to yonder place and it will move and nothing will be impossible to you. Amen.